So let's make this bad boy. Nine points in smithing. And look at that, 25,000 gold. So it clearly does still work. And not only does it work, it works so much better than it did before. We don't even need javelins. We just make genuinely awesome weapons, barely even exploiting the system at this point. And it is still making us bucket loads of money. If you want to find out how, stay tuned. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everyone. Wherever you are and whatever you're doing, I hope that you're having a fantastic day. Today, I'm bringing you an updated smithing guide. It is about time I do one to address some questions and queries from the first one that we made. And a lot of people, for some reason, thinking that this doesn't work anymore. In fact, due to a few changes in the most recent few patches, it actually works better than ever. And you don't even need javelins for this to work anymore. So sit back, relax, and enjoy. Firstly, as always, we want to make sure that smithing and endurance are as high as possible during the character creation screen and more importantly that smithing has at least three points in it before we get into the game so let's focus on that so we'll start with smiths next will be skill with horses to increase endurance docks and building sites for more smithing this one you can either go trained with the guard or rode with the scouts depending on if you want polearm skill or bow skill i'm going to go with bow skill personally invested money into a workshop and just to show you all that we can do this on the hardest possible difficulty we are starting at the age of 20 we are a baby there is no extra focus points no extra attribute points and ergia no that's already taken boron null let's be called rich boy mcgee and now that these difficulty presets are in, we are going to be the Bannerlord. Everything is on realism, challenging, we can die. It's just to show you that this is possible no matter what the difficulty settings. And because I always forget to do this, and as a throwback to the previous video, fun fact for everyone, 80% of people who watch these guides don't subscribe to the channel. It helps me out tremendously. It helps YouTube to promote my content to other people so that we can grow the community. So I'm going to use this opportunity to call the family name. Please like and subscribe. You beautiful people <laughs> and let's just go with there we go done this is us rich boy mcgee gained a level straight away we want to make sure that we are an efficient charcoal maker three units of charcoal from two units of hardwood this is going to become invaluable and straight away we do get an extra skill point which is going straight into smithing now the reason i've gone batania as my culture isn't because of the bonus it's because of our starting location it makes it much easier for us to dodge some really nasty packs of looters and also start nearby to the towns and cities that we need so we're going to start off by grabbing a cheap mule from somewhere ideally we want one for no more than 100 gold and we're going to head over to andern and grab ourselves a bit of hardwood obviously making sure you're avoiding bandits at all costs, that can be seriously detrimental to your run. Perfect. 69 gold for a mule. This means we can now actually hold some hardwood. And we're going to go to Andern and just grab six of it for now. We, we can probably go more. Let's go 10. Perfect. And the reason that we started here, obviously aside from a mule from Sianon and hardwood from Andern, is we can now head over to Lagata and hopefully pick up Xyphos and Pudgios. This is why you have to be extra careful. That could have been detrimental to the run. So you may notice near the start of this guide, it's fairly similar to the previous one. However, there are some huge changes and huge differences that make it a lot better now. Now you have more stamina, the higher your smithing level is, and it reduces slower. So we can do a lot more smithing in a much shorter period of time. Also, towns have twice as much gold as they did before, so it's going to be a lot easier to sell stuff and make some money. We will save the rest of our money and just grab the one Xyphos from here. Let's smelt it down. Okay, let's go on the search of some more materials. Budgio, nice, but we need more. You'll notice that our money's already running out, and I very nearly ran into that group of looters. It's fine. We are not planning on getting in any fights. So, if needs be, we can sell all of our armor. This is fine. As a Batanian, we can get a decent amount of money from our armor on our horse, and it's fine if we need to use it. This may be enough for our first sword. Let's give it a go. No, we're going to need some crude iron. Okay, let's keep searching. Now, we need some crude iron, and we need some more wrought iron, and we can really start getting this off the ground. So, judging by the prices of everything, blacksmith hammers will give us one of each. 
which is very nice because they are quite cheap. And an iron pitchfork will give us crude. So we can grab a couple of each of them and maybe start to sell our clothes. There we are, perfect. Now, smelt them down. We'll wait here for some time to get our smithing stamina back to full. It takes 16 real-time seconds to become 100% smithing stamina again, for anyone that's interested. Now, we should be able to make our first sword. Okay, I'm going to pause here on the grips and explain something to everyone, as I think this is where a few people are falling down and believing that this no longer works. You have to make sure you are using a grip that only says two-handed here for this to work. Even if it's a grip that can do both and you select two-handed, this won't work. It won't sell for anywhere near enough money. So so make sure that your grip only has a two-handed option. Weirdly, this example is called a leather-wrapped one-handed grip, but ignore that. This is all you're looking for. Then we want to max out every single slider and min-max slightly so that we are getting the absolute best stats that we possibly can out of our sword. They're all looking quite good already, honestly. Oh, there you go. This is a good example. So if I move this slider down, you'll see the handling actually increases ever so slightly but no other stat changes. This is a straight up improvement. So I'll keep going until we notice a stat decrease. There, the thrust speed has now just increased as well. This is great. Keep going, keep going. And there, the swing cut damage has just reduced. So that is the sweet spot right there. And we'll now create this sword. And we should find that already that is selling for a decent amount of gold. A thousand gold. There we go. We have just made back all of our starting money. With that, you know what? I'm going to sell my horse, my saddle, and all of my weapons and rinse and repeat. We want a couple of blacksmith hammers, a couple of iron pitchforks, and maybe some wooden hammers as well so that we can keep our hardwood reserves up. Each wooden hammer will break down to three hardwood. So as long as hardwood is more than 24 here in this town, then it's better for me to smell the wooden hammers which it is. Go back here, refine some of this, smelt all of these down, wait for some time, finish smelting. I'm actually going to do a bit of refining here and get myself some iron, so we will need to wait for a little bit longer. But essentially, all you're aiming to do at this point here is make as powerful a sword as you can, as the more powerful the sword, the more money it sells for. And on that point, I have also been told before that the main stat that matters for sell price is the swing cut damage. This is not true. I've since found out the higher difficulty the sword, the more it sells for. It's as simple as that. If you make a 200 difficulty sword that has less swing cut damage than a 100 difficulty sword, the 200 difficulty sword will still sell for more. It's only dependent on the quality of the materials and the difficulty of the sword. Swing cut damage has a very, very minor increase. So talking of that, this is the only blade we have so far. So let's max that out. We'll max out this guard here. Oh, have we unlocked? Now, so these are both one handed and two handed. We want to stay away from them for now. So we can still only go with this one. And finally, this uses one hardwood. Okay, so as I've just said, this flat pommel would technically make us slightly more money. However, it uses a wrought iron, which means I can only make one. If I switch it to the round wooden pommel, we can make two of them because it uses a hardwood. So again, I'm going to min max the stats. We'll leave that on max and we'll make two of these. The last round of swords sold for a thousand each. We are already up to 1400. We are really starting to ramp up the money and we've essentially not done anything. This has been such an easy, casual playthrough so far. We have barely even done anything. Get a few more wooden hammers, blacksmith hammers, and now we will go on search of some better quality weapons to smelt. I'm going to try Poros, avoiding death ideally we are a lot slower as we sold our horse the horse is probably the one thing you want to try and hang on to if you can even if you need to sell all of your other gear we can afford to buy a horse back now we have 3000 gold and i may do just that but you and as i foss there we go now it's not worth getting these lances it's not worth getting the spiked club Honestly, I'm pretty sure they all just give you one wrought and one crude iron anyway. So if you need some, just get blacksmith hammers. I'm going to get these two. We are going to grab a horse. This is back up to seven speed again. You don't need to worry about a saddle. You only need to worry about a saddle in combat. A saddleless horse will still put your speed back to seven again. Assuming, obviously, you're traveling solo. Very nearly run into the mountain bandits then. Let's go to Lycaron. Another Xyphos. And hopefully that will be enough to get us... Another juicy weapon. 
Okay, we've smelted everything. We've got a few materials. Let's go back to our two-handed swords. Okay, here we can actually make something better now. Unfortunately, we don't have quite enough fine steel to make it. One more Poggio would give us the long Falx blade. So I'm going to try and find a town with one more Poggio before we craft this next weapon. Even on the map, I am a naked man on a horse. This is an odd sight to witness. Yes. Here we go. It is time, my friends. We are going to craft a long Falx blade. Again, let's min max it. So if I bring the size down ever so slightly, the swing speed actually increases. This is good. They both require crude iron. This is fine. Max that slider. I believe this is still the only two handed grip we have. So again, we'll max this slider. So this is a perfect example. Here we go. All three of these pommels require the same amount of difficulty to craft. The globe pommel gives you far more swing cut damage than the other two. So in this circumstance, you would go for the globe pommel. The swing cut damage does increase the value of items that you craft when you sell them. However, it's just not the most important factor. So if I'd have knocked something else down here that used a much better material, but didn't give as much swing cut damage, I would go for this. But as it's the only thing available, let's min max the globe pommel and craft. 15 points in smithing, a buttload of new smithing parts, and 12,000 dinars. That's pretty much it. You can just rinse and repeat now. You've just won. You've just won. And you don't even need javelins. I'm going to skip forward a bit here, get a few more awesome crafting materials, and show you exactly how awesome and easy this is. I have skipped forward in game just a couple of days and come across Epicrotia, which I had forgotten how incredible this town is for smithing equipment. I just picked up seven Puggios and like five Xyphos from here. And what I'm going to do is make some money and then also buy other weapons that are a bit more expensive than these two and see if they're worth it. See if when you've got a bit more money, see if you should buy anything else as well we'll test it out here and now i've also bought a, bought a falchion and an iron spatha let's check out what they smelt into they both give you a lot of wrought iron i'd say they're probably not worth it though they were like a thousand gold each And look how much gold that just made us. Oh, damn. That is crazy. Now, for your main character, you always want to increase the rate of learning new designs, chance of learning new parts, etc, etc. Leave your refining to your companions. So we're going to grab Curious Smelter, Curious Smith, and Experienced Smith. Bump up our smithing and endurance. Maybe a point into athletics. So, riding, and two-handed. Now that we've got 60 thousand gold let's grab one of them one of them one of them they're all mostly between 1000 to 3000 there's a couple of exceptions there the battle axe is 6000 uh the spartha is four let's have a look and see if any of these are worth it or if you really should just stick budgios and xyphos also let's get some more hardwood okay take note cleaver hell yes spartha Hell yes. The battle axe was the one that cost us 6,000. It does give us some steel, but I wouldn't say it's worth the cost. The steel Shestopio is just like an enhanced version of the Cyphos, but for like four or five times the cost. I'd say most of these give good materials, but the return on investment is just nothing compared to the Xyphos or the Puggio. So you can definitely get most of these if you want to. I'd steer clear of the Fine Pike. I'd probably steer clear of the Cataphract Lance. One steel for how much it cost is crazy but none of them are terrible we finally have unlocked a better two-handed grip so let's use this one they're both very similar except this only uses the one steel so we'll go for this so we can make more and this because it uses iron over wrought iron in our first month bearing in mind this was with a lot of testing of new weapons of not being as efficient as we could we've started with the hardest possible start in sandbox mode with everything on realism at 
age 20 so that we have no extra abilities or perks and yeah in a month we have made a hundred thousand dinars easy we can now put a workshop down we can make a caravan and all of that is without really exploiting smithing we didn't use javelins we just became a master craftsman and made some really awesome swords and now we can go and have a very very fun campaign so with all that said i hope you enjoyed i hope you learned something i hope it was helpful have an awesome day and i'll see you again soon bye bye